memoir is called Raw, My Journey into the Wu-Tang. We welcome your questions, thoughts, stories, recollections of the impact that Wu-Tang's music had on you. October's Finest tweeted, the 90s wouldn't be 90s hip-hop without them. Agreed. What other questions and thoughts do you have about the rise of Wu-Tang Clan or questions for you got? Email us 1A at WAMU.org. Let's listen to... Some, well, the Wu-Tang Clan's debut album, 36 Chambers, came out in 1993. You were doing some time behind bars when the album was being made, but you were released just in time to record a verse on one of 36 Chambers' biggest songs, The Mystery of Chess Box. Listen. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna to you with no trivia. Roll like cocaine straight from Bolivia. My hip hop will rock and shock the nation. I did emancipation proclamation. We get seen, a coach was slain to death. And while I run into the ball and bang your head, I push a force, a force shit down. I make a devil's power. That's a clip from The Mystery of Chess Boxing from 36 Chambers, the Wu Tang Clan's debut album released Gosh. in the. <laughs> what? Say again? I was so young, Josh. I, I hated my voice like, Jesus Christ. I was like, now you young, you think you grown, but you ain't really grown yet, but you think you grown. <laughs> well, you, you had to start somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, I had to start somewhere, you know. I'm Joshua Johnson. You're listening to 1A. Talk about how that verse came about. How do you write a rap verse? Or at least how did you write back uh, then? Let me tell you something, though. See, that's the crazy thing about that verse, right? Because I had just got released on, 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 on work release. Rizza grabs me up, said, yo, we need you on the front, bro. What's front verse? I said, huh? I want that, that raw and give it to you. I want that, I want that rhyme. Rizza, one of the group's co-founders. For those yeah, who know, Rizza, Rizza was, the, yeah, he's a producer. He's a, he's a, he's a heavyweight producer. So, he calls me up, I go through the, I do the verse. No lie. Two days later, I'm back up in the mountains again, locked up again. Two days after you recorded this, you were back behind I'm bars. Dead. I was back behind bars again. That's how crazy I was back then. I was just, I wasn't 100% focused in my music at the time because I was still street poisoned. I was like 20% focused, you know what I mean? And um, focus is a very key word in, in this music thing. You have to be really focused on your craft in order to, to get the best out of yourself, you know what I mean? So, well, you know, I, I wonder about that because we, we uh, last year we interviewed uh, Gucci Mane when his book came out. Yeah. And he talked about the transitions that he had between the streets, you know, slinging drugs and being behind bars and writing raps and being very entrepreneurial at a lot of different things. And he talked about how far he had to fall personally before he was like, oh, I have to give up living that life and just focus on, on hip hop. And from what I read in your book, you kind of went back and forth as well before finally you committed to just doing music and you left, you left street life behind. Yeah, but see, Josh, the whole thing about it is that when you get thrusted into this forefront of music and then you become popular, you still have to shake that street stuff off that you was born with, that you was raised in. And it's a very hard situation to do that for us, like for like for males or black males in, in a situ so type, same type of situations, you know what I mean? When you come from that type of hood, you have to shake that mentality. And it's very hard. You don't realize that you've been conditioned until you leave that environment. And when you leave that environment, that's when the change from your mind break free, you're like, whoa, what was I thinking? I was crazy, you know what I mean? You was like, you, you realized there was there's a brain shift going on there. Because in that poverty level, you you are boxed in. But when you get out of that, your brain self jumps up, and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, I gotta readjust. So now, once you readjust it, now you're like, okay, now this is a business, this is, this is how I'm gonna make my living. And now you readjust your brain waves to that, you know, to, to, the, to the new way you're doing, the, the, the new way you're living right now at the time, you know? It's interesting, a lot of, you know, a lot of what, what people denounce about a lot of rap music is, especially music kind of like what the Wu-Tang Clan put out, is the way that it portrays and talks about drugs and street culture and thug life. But it's also interesting to see from your story, from Gucci Mane's story, from other rapper stories, that the same kind of skill set that it took for you to survive on the streets and learn to make money is the skill set you use in the music industry. You talk near the end of the book about how similar they turned out to be. Yes, it is very similar because, and when you was hustling in the streets, you had to have, uh, you know, you had to have um, a package. Basically, it's your, it's your product you sell, right? And then, then you got to get your customers. Then you got to have the best product out there. You know, and then you got to constantly have them satisfied. And it's the same thing in all business. 
You know what I mean? Whether it's a small business or illegal business, it's, it's on a grand scale, it's the same similar situation. And the only thing is that when, when you get out of the hood, when you get out of the streets, you don't have to look over your back no more. You know, you still have, that's why I said a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people that come out of the, the ghetto are, you know, these, these successful rappers have to shake that off. And like, I, I've seen Kodak Black, he's going through it too. And I've been wanting to sit down, I want to talk to him too, let him understand, like, yo, there's nobody following you, bro. You don't have to worry about, you know, the things that you used to have to worry about when you was in, um, you know, when you was in the streets. You, 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 you made it. You gotta, you gotta put the guns down, you gotta leave the stuff alone, get your babies right, get your family right, and, and just move on and, and gradually get out of that, that, that mindset because it's over. You won. You know what I mean? It's, it's over. The war's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's basically what it is. It's like you, you still think it's a war going on, and it's not. You, you won. You, you got out of there, you're making a living, and you can put all that stuff down and be like, ah. Oh. Right. I know we have to. I know we have to pause for a break in just a minute. But Lee asked on our Facebook page, "How did they arrive at the name of the group? Where does the name Wu Tang Clan come from?" Well, it's an acronym. You know, it's witty, really unpredictable talent and natural game. That's Wu Tang Clan. And um, the Wu is a dynasty. It's definitely you know Asian oriented, orientated. And um, you know, we used to love Kung Fu Flicks back then. And, and, and the days when we was kids. 42nd Streets and, and the Kung Fu Fix was the, was the, was the, you know, was the, was the bee's knees. You know, it was the bottom line. You know, you always wanted to be Bruce Lee or, you know, Jim Kelly or you wanted to be, you know, a master at your craft. So that's why we kind of orientated the Asian culture in our music because we like the mastery of, of, of Kung Fu. How you have to study real hard and be, be great at what you do. And, and be the best, you know what I mean? And then, 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 then even, even in, the older you got, the more ill you got too. Right. You know, that was another fact that we loved too. Like we always wanted to be the old, the old, the old bad dude that was that was still you no know, kicking butt. You know what I mean? And still doing what he had to do. You know what I mean? I had to find my, you know, I had to get in where I fit in. Right? Everything was already up and running, and you know, Ray was working on this record, and Dirty's record was already done, and Genius was working on his, and Rizzo was doing great things. So I was kind of confused. So I'm trying to get. My, my mojo back, and I got kicked out of the booth like 15 times because I, I I was stinky. <laughs> I was. You talk about this in the book that you weren't yeah. a very good rapper at first. No, nah, I came. I came. I was rusty. I still had to shake that. I had to shake that crap off. You know, I had to shake that little jail stuff off me. You know, when you in jail, you don't get the utensils that you need to be, you know, to be rhythmically, rhythmically, uh, you know, in tune. So what happened was, I got kicked out of the booth like 15 times. I kept coming back. On the 16th time, we did, we did Winter Wars, you know, and I, I landed on I landed on the first verse. After I got that off my chest, that's when I started com being able to compete and get in, into those slots I needed to get on. Because basically, it was judged off it was judged off how how good you did in, in on on your 16 bars. Because basically, you only got 16 bars to entertain, you know, to get it in. And if somebody says, Nah, that wasn't a good 16. You know, do that over or now nah, that was whack. So I had to go in there and do that. But this time I got in there and I did my thing. You know? let's, that's, let's listen to those 16 bars. And then afterward, I want you to tell me what it is that, that made the difference. Here are the 16 bars from Winter Wars. There's you got Everyone has a character within themselves. Every person on this planet Earth has a, has a character. And I always felt like I had to bring my character to the situation. That took me kind of a long time too, because remember, I got sucked up in, I came right out of the can into the music. So I had to, I kind of got lost in everybody's character for a moment. So what I had to do was I had to fall back and find myself. And what I realized is that I'm, you know, I'm a street dude. I know I came from the hood. I'm gonna rhyme about those elements and, and, and keep it right there. And with a little mixture of that, a little bit of education, a little bit of uh, awareness, a little bit of Bible, a little bit, little bit of everything quoted together and crunch it all down to 16. And I'm gonna give it to you. And, and basically, that's what every, each member has. They have their own character. Raycorn is, is also a street guy, so he came with his street situation. Ghostface is a thug, so he gonna thug on you. Riz is a little more chemical, a little more complex. Genius, his wordplay is just, he's just a full sentence structure, 
And he's mackling with his words, with his vocals. And he just, he just ran out of Thanks for talking you're, to us. You're amazing, baby. You're amazing. Thank you for having me, man. <laughs> 